Well, good morning and welcome to this short uh, reading on this Good Friday morning. Thank you for joining us here at St Peter's. Now, I wonder if you can remember the old Mission Impossible TV programmes before they became big films with Tom Cruise. Remember at that point in every episode where they'd be told that this is your mission should you choose to accept it. And then they tell you whatever the mission was. And then this tape will self-destruct in five seconds. Good luck. Well, if you've ever read through the accounts of Jesus's life in the Gospels, you'll see as well that he also was on a mission. In fact, right at the beginning of John's Gospel, we get told this by Jesus's cousin, John the Baptist. He said this about Jesus. Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. You see, that's Jesus's mission, to take away our sins, to forgive us. That's what we see happen then in John chapter 19, the final moments of his mission. And this is what it's all been building up to for Jesus. Let me read some of it to you now. Later, knowing that everything had now been finished and so that scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant and lifted it to Jesus's lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Now it was the day of preparation and the next day was to be a special Sabbath because the Jewish leaders did not want the bodies left on the crosses during the Sabbath. They asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken down. The soldiers therefore came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with Jesus and then those of the other. But when they came to Jesus and found that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear, bringing a sudden flow of blood and water. The man who saw it has given testimony, and his testimony is true. He knows that he tells the truth, and he testifies so that you also may believe. These things happened so that the scripture would be fulfilled, not one of his bones will be broken. And as another scripture says, they will look on the one they have pierced. And here ends the reading of God's word. So the first thing this passage tells us then about Jesus at the end of his mission is that he thirsted. Did you hear that? He said, I am thirsty. Well, perhaps that's not so surprising about a man suffering a horrible death, being thirsty. But Jesus is making a point. He's not just talking about thirsting for water. Instead, he's telling us something far more important, particularly when we think about who he says he is. You see, Jesus is actually the one who quenches our thirsts. All the way back in John chapter four, Jesus is sat by a well speaking with a woman. You see, she's wanting to get some water from this well, but he knows that what he can offer her is a different kind of drink. He says to her, whoever drinks the water out of this well will get thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. He makes this clear when he says again in John chapter seven, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Jesus promises that he is the one who can quench our thirsts, our thirst for love, our thirst for being known for safety and our thirst for life that doesn't end in death. Jesus is the one who can quench the thirst that we all have. And Jesus promises that he can give us that as an ongoing experience, something that's true for every Christian. You see, when we become a Christian, God puts his Holy Spirit inside of us. And he's like a constant source of water that quenches all our thirsts. Now, last week in Brighton, it was the Brighton Marathon. And if you were there, you would have seen water stations everywhere. That's because, well, if you run a marathon, you need to drink a lot of water. Without it, you'll find it harder and harder, and eventually you'll have to stop. 
So it goes to show that if we are to live the kind of life that God wants us to, we need to be relying on him as the one who quenches our thirsts. So bear all of that in mind when Jesus says on the cross, I am thirsty. The very person who is able to quench our thirst is feeling thirsty. Now, the beginning of John's gospel tells us that Jesus has always existed. He's always been alive and he's always been in a perfect relationship with our Father God and the Holy Spirit. But now he hangs dying on a cross. He in some way experiences for the first time in eternity thirst from that life-giving spirit. Well, imagine last week at the marathon as someone running in first place miles ahead but he sees behind him a rival who has fallen to the floor from dehydration, hasn't had a drink. So he gives up the last bottle of water to that person so that they can go on instead and finish the race. And this is why it's so amazing that Jesus was willing to be thirsty in our place so that he could complete his mission to save us. But the second thing that we notice is that he finished. He finished. Just before Jesus dies, he cries out, it is finished. What is finished? Well, the mission that he set out to do, his sacrifice, his life for us. Now, in the original language the New Testament was written in, the word used is teletestai. And it's a word that would be used in a, a professional setting or in the marketplace. Like when you finish an order for a client and you phone them up to say it, the job's finished. Teletestai. But what is finished? What is Jesus getting at? Well, the work of offering himself as a sacrifice, that is now completed, it's finished. This work is finished because sh as Jesus shouts out and dies, the work is completed. The price is paid, the price for everything, everything that we've ever done and will do that we shouldn't have has been paid. Through Jesus' work, his finished work on the cross, we can be forgiven. You see, God wants to forgive you and God wants to welcome you into his family. And to top it all off, he's done everything necessary to make it happen. All you have to do is RSVP, yes please, to the invitation. Now one person says, it's a little bit like this. Every religion says pay up. Pay up for your good behavior. Pay with your time. Pay with pilgrimage. Pay with work to the poor. Pay with prayer. Pay with trying to be a better person. But only Jesus said, it is paid. Do you see the reason why Jesus thirsted and why he finished what he set out to do is because of who he is. He is the lamb. Now, several hundred years before Jesus completed his mission, the prophet Isaiah, writing the Old Testament, made a prophecy about what would one day happen. He said that all of us, just like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us have turned to our own way. Isaiah 53, 6. Isaiah says, we've all wandered off from God, just like sheep in an open field. But God's solution for rescuing wandering sheep is actually by sacrifice, sacrificing a lamb. You see, Isaiah also writes in the very next verse that this Jesus will be like a lamb led to the slaughter. You see, the lamb deals with the consequences of the sheep's wandering. Now, last night on Monday, Thursday, we were remembering how Jesus had a supper with his friends at the time of the Jewish Passover and how they remembered when hundreds of years before to rescue and to save the people living in those Jewish households in Egypt and to stay safe from the terrible judgment that was coming, that they had to slaughter a lamb and that the lamb's blood had to be daubed onto the door frames. So when we think on Good Friday how Jesus died, we're meant to see that and see, yeah, he's the Passover lamb. And by resting under the blood of this lamb, we will be kept safe from the future day of judgment. So I pray for all of this, this Good Friday, we are moved, deeply moved in our spirits by the self-sacrifice of the lamb of God, Jesus Christ, and how the one who can quench our thirsts does so by becoming thirsty in our place. I pray we are changed by knowing that he finished his work in saving us and all we need to do is say yes please to his invite. The cross is the place of Jesus' victory over sin, over death, over the devil. 
but it doesn't finish there because Sunday is coming. It's me. 